grateful folks in the house this Sunday morning. Amen. Amen. We bless the Lord. We bless the Lord for another Sunday morning. I believe you who are in the sanctuary, you are grateful. And I believe you who are out there in social media land, you are grateful as well for all that God has done for us. We welcome you into God's house this Sunday morning. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Amen, amen. Our ensemble is getting ready to give us another song this Sunday morning, and I encourage each of you to worship God this Sunday morning like it's your last time. Amen, somebody. He deserves the glory, he deserves the honor, and he sure enough deserves our praise. Amen.
Good morning from the friendly church that loves and cares. Thank you for coming out this morning. This morning I will be reading one of my favorite scriptures, the 23rd Psalm. And it reads, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The grass withered, the flowers faded, but the words of God shall stand forever. Thank you, amen. Good morning, you might say. Let us bow our heads in a word of prayer. Dear Father, this is the day you have made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. You know what today will bring and what tomorrow's needs will be. If we awake and bring it today, we can be assured it is with great purpose in order to bring glory and honor to you the one true God, Jesus, our Savior, friend, and Redeemer. It's through you we come to the Father and spread the love of the gospel. Remind us, through your Spirit, who convicts and comforts us of our truth. In moments when we find ourselves slumped into the places we land when things unravel, we know you meet us there and comfort and to supply the strength we need to stand again. Use our lives as vessels of love and truth. Let us see ourselves through the lens of faith and the Father's purposeful perspective. The author of Hebrews reminds us not to neglect to do good and share what we have because such sacrifices are pleasing to you, Father. We know all good things come from you, and you make good all things. Let us share in the good works you have prepared for us by the outflowing of, of our faith in Christ to the people we have placed in our lives. We pray for your favor, God, and your protective embrace as we look out into the world to do good and share what we have. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen.
There is always somebody talking about me. Really, I don't mind. Trying to stop and block my progress most of the time. Listen now, but the mean things to say don't make me feel bad. Can't miss some friends that I never had. I got Jesus, and that's enough. Listen to me now. So many times I didn't have a dime. I told nobody but the Lord He heard my plea, came to see about me He's my all in all When you press me down Lifting me up Stand by me when my going get tough I got Jesus And that's enough By my side, you pick me down, Jesus. Pick me up. Stand by me when my going gets rough. I got Jesus, and that's enough. Whoa, oh, He raised me, that's enough. Uh, He saved me. That's God blessed me, that's and enough. He never. By my side, you press me down. Look at you. Stand by me when we're going to rough. I got him. I got Jesus, my friend. I got Jesus, my doctor. If you got Jesus, you got everything. If you got Jesus, yeah, you got money, you got money. If you got Jesus, you got a rock. If you got Jesus, you got a shelter. If you got Jesus, yeah, you got him. You got him. Yeah, you got him. Jesus, I got. Anybody else got Jesus? Oh, I got it. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Blessed Savior, he's worthy to be praised. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Blessed Savior, he's worthy to be praised. Come on, praise. Can y'all help me? 
me say that praise him praise him praise him Jesus blessed Savior Sunday morning, we summon your senses and we invite your intellect 
this fourth Sunday morning to the Gospel according to John, the Johannine Gospel, chapter 5. And I want to read in your hearing uh, verse 2 through verse number 9. Amen. If you have your Bibles with you or you can view it there on the screen, the monitors, John chapter 5. Beginning with verse number two, concluding with verse number nine. This is what the word of God says. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda. Having five porches in these lay a great deal or a great multitude of impotent folk. Blind folks halted, withered, and they are waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel, word of God says in verse number four, for an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. And whosoever then first after troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever diseased he had. Verse 5 says, and a certain man was there which had an infirmity 38 years when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case. He said unto him, will thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him saying, sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I'm yet cometh, another step down before me. Verse eight, Jesus said unto him, rise, take up thy bed and walk. And immediately, the Bible said that the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day, it was the Sabbath day. My God from Zion. I want to tag this text and talk about this Sunday morning. I want to talk about diseased but delivered. My God from Zion. Diseased but delivered. My God from Zion. He had a disease, but the Bible says he was delivered. My brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, I have discovered that we serve a God who can deliver us from any and all situations. Talk to me somebody. I, I need to say that again this Sunday morning. We serve a God, you and I serve a God, ladies and gentlemen, who is able to deliver us from any and all situations that we may experience or have. Let me, let me say it one more time for those in the back. Somebody didn't hear me this Sunday morning. I need somebody to get this. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but this is going to bless somebody this Sunday morning. You and I serve a God. We serve a God, New Mount Zion, who is able who is capable, who is willing to deliver us from any and all situations that we may find ourselves in. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I want to tell you this Sunday morning, it doesn't matter what the situation may be. It doesn't matter how long you've been in a situation. It doesn't matter how long you've been facing a dilemma. It does not matter how deep in sin you have fallen. It doesn't matter how far away from God you have strayed. I need to tell somebody this Sunday morning that time is no issue for God. Picking you up is no issue for God. Distance is no issue for the God we serve because the Bible says that God specializes in doing things that seem impossible. 
Can I help somebody here this Sunday morning? As a matter of fact, ladies and gentlemen, when you read the Bible or when you study the Bible, you will discover that God is known to be a deliverer. Help me preach this Sunday morning. Anybody believe that? Anybody discover that besides Tobias? If you look at the resume of Jesus, if you look at the track record of the God we serve, uh, the Bible that I read and records uh, that the God we serve uh, throughout history and throughout the Bible days, uh, he has been known to be a deliverer. Let me help somebody. Let me call the road this Sunday morning. The Bible says uh, that he delivered the children of Israel from Egypt. He delivered Daniel from the lion's den. I learned in Sunday school uh, that he delivered the three Hebrew boys from the fiery furnace. I learned uh, in Bible study that he delivered uh, Joshua out of the pit. Talk to me somebody. He delivered Paul and Silas uh, out of a Roman jail. He delivered uh, Jesus Christ from a cold grave uh, throughout history. And, uh, the Bible will show you that the God we serve uh, is known to be a deliverer. As a matter of fact, New Mount Zion, as a matter of fact, I want to proclaim and tell somebody this Sunday morning Nobody had to tell it to me. Nobody had to email me or text me this, but I want to tell somebody this Sunday morning uh, there is something uh, going on in all of our lives uh, that we need to be delivered from. Can, can, can anybody just be honest and raise your hand and say, that, that's me, Pastor. There is something you don't have to tell me what it is, uh, but there is something uh, that is going on uh, in all of our lives uh, that we need to be delivered from. Talk to me, somebody, because I come to tell you, you haven't reached perfection just yet. Come on, say amen, somebody. You haven't reached perfection. You ain't that sanctified. You ain't that holy. I don't care how long you've been in the church. You may be Jesus Jr. Talk to me, somebody. But there is something this Sunday morning going on in your life that you need God to deliver you from. Can, can, can anybody just raise your hand this Sunday morning and say, I need God to deliver me from some stuff? Come on, help me preach this. I see one or two hands back there. Anybody here yeah, not ashamed to raise your little chocolate hand uh, and testify that there's some stuff going on in your life uh, that you need God to deliver you from? Because I need to help somebody this Sunday morning. Drug users are not the only ones who need to be delivered. Talk, talk to me somebody. Alcoholics are not the only ones uh, who need to be delivered. Dope dealers, uh, they are not the only ones who need to be delivered uh, because I'm looking at somebody and somebody is looking at me uh, who needs God to deliver you from something. Talk to me somebody. All of us need to be delivered from something. And I, I, I need to tell somebody this Sunday morning before I get to the text this Sunday morning because I've discovered, uh, New Mount Zion, that people are always looking for something or somebody to help them in their daily life. Am I right about it this Sunday morning? Talk to me. Pe people are always looking for somebody to help and many times we look everywhere else except Jesus Christ. Preach the Bible, you doing it this Sunday morning. We always look for folks, Oprah Winfrey, talk to me somebody to say something to help us get delivered from situations. But I come to tell somebody this Sunday morning, hear me, if you don't mind, can I tell you something this Sunday morning? Self-help cannot solve spiritual problems. Somebody didn't get that. Let me say it one more time this Sunday morning. Self-help cannot solve spiritual problems. I'm going to try it one more time. Somebody didn't let that get in your spirit this Sunday morning. Self-help 
cannot solve a spiritual problem because watch this if if self is the problem then self can't come up with the solution for the problem somebody just missed that this sunday morning if self is the problem uh, then self-help cannot come up with a solution for the problem but I come to tell somebody this Sunday morning that regardless of, of the spiritual disease you may have uh, regardless uh, of the physical disease you may have uh, I come to tell you this Sunday morning uh, that God is a deliverer matter of fact you ought to look over and tell somebody you can be delivered I don't know who needed to hear that this Sunday morning, but you ought to look over and tell somebody that you can be delivered because in the Bible this Sunday morning, we find here a man who was diseased, but he was delivered. Good God Almighty, I like that this Sunday morning. The text will show you, ladies and gentlemen, that the sermonic topic or the sermon for the day will show you there was a man who was diseased, but the Bible says he was still delivered. Now, now watch this, ladies and gentlemen. I like this. Let me unfold and unpack the text this Sunday morning. The Bible will show you uh, that this man was diseased. Matter of fact, the Bible says that he was impotent. Talk to me, somebody. Impotent meaning that he had no strength. Uh, his hands were weak. He couldn't do the work of the Lord. His feet were weak. Uh, his legs were weak. He couldn't go to the house of the Lord. The Bible will show you that he was impotent. His body was weak. He could not give service to the Lord. Uh, the Bible says uh, he was diseased. Uh, he was impotent. Uh, he had no power. And I believe New Mount Zion, I believe somebody can testify, much like this man this Sunday morning, that, 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 that you too have been in some situation when you felt weak and you felt like you didn't have any power. I know I'm not the only one, ladies and gentlemen. Somebody here can testify that you too have been to a point in your life uh, when you felt weak, felt like you didn't have any power. I mean, your prayer life was weak. Uh, your service was weak. Uh, your walk was weak. Uh, your work was weak. Uh, your testimony was weak. Uh, somebody may feel as though this Sunday in the morning you have no power and I don't I, I need to help somebody I, I don't know how you feel about it but this is what I've discovered much like this man in the text this Sunday morning it's hard to get delivered when you're hanging around people who are in the same shape that you're in <laughs> talk to me somebody it's hard, tell your neighbor, it's hard to get delivered that way. It's hard, ladies and gentlemen, to get delivered from some stuff, uh, to get delivered from some things. Uh, when you are associated with people, when you are hanging around people who are in the same situation uh, that you are in, who are in the same shape uh, that you are in, who are in the same boat that you are in, talk to me, somebody uh, is hard to have money when you hanging around broke folks uh, it's hard to think positive uh, when you are hanging around negative folks talk to me somebody it's hard to quit cursing uh, when you hang around folks uh, who curse all the time it's hard uh, to give up this and that uh, when they still doing this and that talk to me somebody because the Bible will show you this man uh, he was not delivered and he was hanging around people in the same shape he was in. Matter of fact, you ought to look over and tell your neighbor this Sunday morning, you may need some new friends. Good God Almighty, you ought to tell somebody, I feel good this Sunday morning, you need some new associates, uh, because if God uh, is going to deliver you, uh, you can't hang around folks uh, in the same shape that you're in. No, no, 
notice if you're here. I, I, I got three things I want to show you in the text this Sunday morning, ladies and gentlemen. No, notice here, if you will, that his life uh, began to change and take a turn for the better when the Bible says, I like this because the Bible says that his life began to change when he was uh, looked upon. That's the first thing I need to tell you this Sunday morning. Write it down so you don't forget it this Sunday morning. The Bible says uh, that his life began to change. Uh, his situation took a turn for the better. And it's simply because uh, he was looked upon. Now here's what make a difference, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible says uh, that he was looked upon uh, by Jesus the Christ. Somebody just missed that this Sunday morning. He was diseased, but he was getting ready to be delivered because the Bible says he was looked on by the master. It's right there, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, if, 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 if God is going to deliver you from some stuff, if God is going to deliver you from some situation, if he's going to turn that situation around, I, I need to tell you, you need God to look upon you. Lord have mercy. That's what happens right there in verse number six. I don't want y'all to think I'm making this up. Look at what happened in verse number six. The Bible says that when Jesus saw him lie. Good God almighty. The Bible says that when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, a, a long time in that situation, a, a long time dealing with that issue, the, the Bible says, uh, Jesus said unto him, uh, do you really want to be made whole? The Bible says, ladies and gentlemen, G Jesus looked upon him, and I need to tell you that when Jesus looked upon him, uh, Jesus did not learn or receive facts about this man's condition from other people. Th this is what I love about God. People don't have to tell God what's going on in your life. Can I help somebody here this Sunday morning? The, the Bible simply suggests uh, that Jesus perceived this man's situation. Uh, Jesus knew this man's situation uh, because of his divine knowledge. Uh, because of his divine power and I come to tell somebody this Sunday morning through the power of the Holy Spirit Jesus knows and he sees every man's condition I need to say that again I felt that this Sunday morning the God I serve he sees and he knows every man's condition every woman's condition every child's condition he knows what we are dealing with he knows what we are going through he reaches out to us he makes himself available to us he knows what you're dealing with in your heart he knows what you're dealing with in your spirit he knows what you're dealing with within your soul uh, and the Bible says uh, he reaches out to us uh, he makes himself available to us uh, because he knows our condition yes, yeah. and this is what I like ladies and gentlemen uh, Jesus knew that this man this is going to bless somebody the Bible says that Jesus knew that this man had been going through for a long time good God almighty the Bible said that Jesus knew this man was going through for a long, long time. He knew the length of time. Uh, and somebody besides Willie Tobias, uh, you can testify this Sunday morning uh, that you too have been going through for a long time. I wish I had somebody who was going to let the cat out the bag uh, and be honest up in here, up in here this Sunday morning. Somebody can testify that you too have been going through for a long time. But I come, I come with a word of hope this Sunday morning. Even though the Lord told me to tell you, even though that you've been going through for a long time. Even though you've been dealing with dilemmas, 
in certain situations for a long time. But the Lord told me to tell you that, that, that your time is coming. Good God, I'm out. I don't know what else is going to make y'all happy and shout this Sunday morning, but the Lord told me to tell somebody that your time is coming. Matter of fact, look over and tell your neighbor, my time is coming. Good God Almighty, look over and tell somebody this Sunday morning that my time is coming. The Bible says uh, that Jesus knew the length of time, but watch this. I'm trying to unpack the text this Sunday morning. The Bible says that Jesus knew the length of time, uh, but the Bible will also show you that Jesus knew the right time. Good God Almighty. Jesus, ladies and gentlemen, I'm trying not to get too happy this Sunday morning. The Bible said that Jesus knew his length of time, but the text is also tailored to teach it that Jesus knew the right time. And can I bless somebody this Sunday morning? I've discovered new Mount Zion that sometime God has to allow us to go through a long time because he knows that the present time ain't the right time. Can I just minister to somebody this Sunday morning? God sometimes uh, have to allow some of us to go through a long time uh, because God knows uh, that the present time is not the right time. Let me help you because let me tell you how God works in some of our lives. Uh, because if God delivers some of us too early, we not might not praise his name. Uh, if God heals some of us uh, a little bit too soon, uh, we may not worship him. Uh, if God delivers some of us uh, too early, many of us will forget from whence we came. Talk to me somebody. So God sometimes uh, has to allow us to remain in that situation, uh, to remain with that dilemma, uh, to remain with that problem, uh, to remain with that issue, uh, because some things, uh, there are some things uh, he's trying to teach us while we're going through. Because the Bible will show you that he knows the length of time, uh, but he also knows the right time. And I want to ask somebody this Sunday morning. Uh, I want to ask somebody this Sunday morning the same question Jesus asked this diseased man in the text. Can I ask you a question this Sunday morning? Whatever your dilemma may be, whatever you are diseased with, whatever your issue, your situation, or your circumstance may be, I want to ask you the same thing uh, that Jesus asked this man in the text. And I want to ask somebody, will you be made whole? Can I help somebody this Sunday morning? Do you really want to be delivered? Do you really want your situation to change? Because the truth of the matter is uh, some folks enjoy being in the situation that they're in. Talk to me somebody. Some people, they really enjoy seeing, y'all looking at me strange this Sunday morning. Some people enjoy being uh, in the situation that they're in. Uh, and Jesus had to ask this man in the text, do you really want to be delivered? Matter of fact, Jesus asked this man the question, do you really want to be made whole? Not only, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, uh, the Bible shows us he was diseased. Um, he was delivered. And it started with Jesus looking upon him. But, but watch this. This is going to bless somebody this Sunday morning. Uh, not only does the Bible say this man was diseased, uh, not only was he looked upon, but the Bible said this man felt like he had been looked over. Good God Almighty, he was looked upon by the master, but he felt like he had been looked over by men. Go ahead, go ahead. Good God Almighty. He was diseased yet delivered uh, and he was delivered because he was looked on by the master uh, but the Bible says uh, while he was dealing with his situation uh, he felt like he had been looked over by me. And I know, I know I'm not the only one in here this Sunday morning but there are so many people who have felt like they have been looked over. 
Good God Almighty, I don't know who I'm preaching to this Sunday morning, but so many people at some point in time uh, have felt like they had been looked over by man. Talk to me somebody, and I want to bless somebody because I don't care how spiritual you are. I don't care how saved you are. Uh, I don't care how righteous you are. Sometimes, New Mount Zion, uh, it can be difficult uh, to see other people people bless uh, other people get their breakthrough uh, other people get delivered uh, and you're still in the same shape that you've been in can I just be true for this Sunday morning I don't care how saved you are how spiritual how righteous how religious you are it can be difficult sometimes to see other people get blessed other people get their breakthrough. Other people get delivered from situations. Other people set free and you're still sitting in the same shape or situation waiting on God to show up for you. Matter of fact, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says um, this, this man felt looked over. It's right there in verse 7. It's right there in verse 7. Do my sign. Uh, look at what? This man says to Jesus, he says, uh, the impotent man began to answer Jesus and say, Son, I, I, I do. I want to be delivered. I want to be healed. I want my situation to change. Uh, but, but he says, I have no man uh, when the water is troubled uh, to put me into the pool uh, because while I'm coming uh, another person steps before me uh, he felt like uh, he had been looked over and he felt like he had been stepped over and, and I love this particular this is one of my favorite particular passages of scripture ladies and gentlemen I'm going to tell you why I love this particular passage of scripture this, this part ladies and gentlemen brother and sister because the Bible will show you this is going to bless somebody I like this particular section because the Bible will show you that people really cannot steal your blessing Preach to Baz, you doing it this Sunday morning. I like this particular passage of scripture because it will show you that people really can't steal your blessing. And just because somebody gets blessed before you, just because somebody else gets delivered before you, that doesn't mean that they took your blessing. That doesn't mean that they took your deliverance. That doesn't mean that they took your breakthrough uh, because the last time I checked the record uh, God hadn't run out of blessings uh, God hadn't run out of miracles uh, if it seems though uh, people are looking over you uh, if it seems like uh, people are stepping over you uh, that has nothing to do uh, with what God has for you uh, because people can't steal your blessing uh, people can't steal your breakthrough Breakthrough, uh, God will do uh, whatever He needs to do uh, in order to bless His people. Matter of fact, you ought to look over and tell somebody, I'm going to get mine. Y'all can look there and look sad, sucked up, and strained if you want to, uh, but I'm going to get mine. Talk to me, somebody, because what God has for me. Uh, I feel my help this Sunday morning. Uh, what God has for me, uh, can't nobody step ahead of me. Uh, can't nobody take it from me. Uh, because what God has for me, uh, it is for me. Uh, I'm, try I'm trying to get out of here this Sunday morning. I I'm trying to cut some of this off. I done studied too much this Sunday morning. You, you ought to tell somebody I'm going to get mine. And I wish, I'm trying to get out of here, I wish uh, I could have told this man uh, that the miracle was not in the water. Can I say that again this Sunday morning? I come to tell somebody, and I wish I could have whispered uh, something to that man uh, at the pool of Bethesda. Uh, I would have told him uh, that the miracle is not in the water. Uh, the miracle uh, was not in the waves, uh, but the miracle was in the words 
hands of Jesus the Christ. I'm going to try that one more time this Sunday morning because I know so many people, uh, they went in the water, uh, they were baptized, uh, they went in dry devils, uh, and they came up wet devils. Talk to me somebody. And this man, uh, I would have told him uh, that the miracle uh, was not in the water. Uh, the miracle uh, was not in the waves. Uh, but the miracle uh, was in the words of Jesus. I'm done this Sunday morning. And, and that's why, that's why I love reading the Bible. Because the Bible is filled with the words of Jesus. Talk to me somebody. That's why I love studying the word uh, because I've discovered uh, that my deliverance is not in people. Uh, my deliverance uh, is not in situations, uh, but my deliverance uh, is in the word of God. Somebody say, preacher, how do you know that deliverance was in the word? Because the Bible said Jesus began to say to the man, rise, take up your bed, and walk. Is there anybody, I'm done this Sunday morning, anybody here not ashamed to testify that God has delivered you from some stuff? Well, if you are still waiting, keep waiting, uh, because not only has he delivered us from some stuff, uh, he will deliver us from some other stuff. Uh, it doesn't matter how long you got to stay uh, at the pool of Bethesda. Uh, keep staying at the pool. Uh, keep lying at the pool. Uh, keep sleeping at the pool. Uh, keep getting stepped over at the pool. Uh, because the God I serve he will deliver and uh, the truth uh, of the matter is ladies and gentlemen uh, the truth uh, of the matter is uh, you can uh, be delivered I wish I had somebody who was going to clip me close this sermon this Sunday morning. Uh, I don't know who this word is for, but uh, the Lord sent me here to tell somebody that uh, you can uh, be delivered. Uh, the Bible says uh, this man, this man, uh, he was looked upon. Uh, the Bible says uh, uh, that this man, uh, uh, he felt as though uh, uh, he was looked over. Uh, but then finally and finally, uh, the reason I know uh, uh, this man was delivered uh, is simply because uh, the Bible says uh, uh, he looked anew. Uh, because the Bible says uh, somebody just missed that this Sunday morning. Uh, the reason I know uh, uh, he was delivered. Uh, because the Bible says uh, uh, he looked anew. Somebody still didn't get it. Uh, the reason I know uh, uh, he was delivered uh, is because the Bible says uh, uh, he looked anew. Uh, because the Bible says uh, in verse 8 and 9, uh, uh, Jesus says to the man, uh, rise up. Uh, uh, take up your bed uh, and uh, begin to walk. Uh, and the Bible says uh, uh, he was made whole. Uh, in other words, uh, he was delivered. Uh, in other words, uh, uh, he looked anew. Uh, uh, you ought to tell somebody uh, uh, he was delivered. If you're not ashamed, uh, uh, tell somebody uh, uh, he was delivered. Uh, uh, he was diseased, uh, but he was delivered. Uh, uh, he was down, uh, but he was delivered. Uh, uh, he had an issue, uh, but he was delivered. Uh, uh, he had been there uh, a very long time. Uh, 
but he was delivered. Uh, he was living in sin, but he was delivered. Uh, somebody can testify uh, the God we serve, uh, uh, he will deliver. Uh, looking at me strange I said the God we serve uh, he's the kind of God uh, who will deliver uh, the old folks will tell you uh, if you call him uh, in the middle of the night uh, if you call him uh, with a sincere heart uh, uh, he will answer uh, by and by now uh, lift your holy hands I said, lift your holy hands and tell somebody uh, he will deliver. He will. He will. He will deliver. This man was diseased. Not for one, two, three, four, five years. 38 years, a long time. And, and this man ain't the only one who's been diseased for a long time. Y'all looking at me strange this Sunday morning. He's not the only one who's been diseased for a long time. But I want to tell somebody this Sunday morning, he was at the right place at the right time. And if you want to get delivered, I don't care what you need to be delivered from. If you're at the right place, at the right time, Jesus will deliver you just like he delivered this man. And, and it is no coincidence, ladies and gentlemen. It's no coincidence, the Bible says, and it was the Sabbath day. Y'all know what that means, don't you? That means that it was a day of worship somebody just missed that this Sunday morning he was delivered on a day of worship and I feel the Holy Ghost in here this Sunday morning I believe somebody is being diseased in disease for a long time and today is your day to be delivered today is your day to be set free Today is your day to have a new look. Talk to me, somebody. He will. Yeah. He will. He will. Deliver. Diseased. But I like that conjunction. Diseased, but deliver. Tell somebody, don't forget the but at the end disease but sick but down but struggling but we can what a word from God this Sunday morning disease but deliver that's a word for somebody this Sunday morning as we stand we're getting ready to open the doors of the church if there's anybody here this Sunday morning who wants to unite with New Mount Zion Church, anybody here wants to give his heart and mind, soul to Jesus Christ, now is the appointed time unto salvation. Come to Jesus yeah. while you have time. As the door of the church open, as we stand, our ensemble is going to give us a closing song this Sunday morning. But listen, we don't want you to leave after the benediction. We want to want you to witness a special presentation this Sunday morning. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Help us this Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. Time is here. Come on, let me hear you. Oh, no. Come on, let me hear you. Things eternal, you are the hope. Come on, let me hear you. Mm, everybody ought to hold to my 
this Sunday morning, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for being a God who can deliver. Thank you, God, because some of us have been going through for a long time. But you know the length of time, God, because you see us in the situation, in the condition, in the state that we're in. Thanks be unto God, you're able to look upon us. Then, God, even though it seems as though others may be getting blessed before us, even though others are moving on, moving further in life, some of us feel like we've been looked over, stepped over, and left over. But, God, we realize and recognize that you know the right time. You know the perfect time to step in. Then, God, we thank you this Sunday morning because when we get delivered, your word says we will look anew. We will look fresh. We will look refreshed and revived. And it's all because the Bible says when this man was delivered, the Bible says immediately, immediately at this moment, he got up, took up his bed, and began to walk. Thank you for being a right now on top of God. Thank you for a God who, who works immediately to give us the desires of our heart. Now, God, as we prepare to leave this place but never your presence, we need more grace, more mercy to follow us not just today, but every day of our lives. Now, may the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, may he rest, rule, and abide with this thou people, now, henceforth, and forever. Somebody ought to say amen, amen, amen. amen. You may be seated in God's house this Sunday morning. We have a quick tribute. We want you to witness and then we're going to exit this place this Sunday morning. First Lady, you are our birthday blessing. We say a prayer for you and celebrate your day. We know God must have heard us and sent a beautiful soul our way. We'd like to thank the Lord above for what the gift 
of you has meant. Just watching you, First Lady, has made our hearts content. We like to thank the Lord above for instilling in you a kind heart, a woman of God we look up to, whose beautiful, humble, virtuous, hard-working, and smart. As we celebrate you today, remember, God is awesome, and He is near, for He is there leading you and guiding you into another year. Know the Lord walks with you and is always by your side. He holds the future in His hand, and First Lady, He will always be your guide. Today, we give you your flowers as you are a Christian example of God's call and all things bestowed upon you but his loving care we pray for most of all. Happy birthday, First Lady Monica Tobias from all the members of the New Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. We love you. Amen. Thank you so much. Until the next Sunday morning, I pray that God keep you in his care and bless each of you real good. Amen. Amen. And amen. Tell somebody he's a mighty good God. <laughs>